know I've been shirking Movie Monday for a while, honestly. At first, it's because I really did have things to do. Then I was just like, you know what, screw this. Primal is way more important. I know it's not exactly Movie Monday, but I decided to go on an adventure because, you know, part of me, very, very, very small part of me, misses it. So I decided to hunt out Tubi TV. As people said that that's a place where you can legally watch movies that are movies that most people don't want to watch. And I found something. Big ass spider. This movie is so freaking weird, but it's good at the same time, which is what makes it very uncomfortable. The movie starts out in what I can say is the most beautiful intro I have ever seen in a low budget movie ever. The guy from Heroes is looking at a titanic spider on a skyscraper just before he meets his death. The fire and destruction raining down around him to a nice cover of Where Is My Mind just sets the tone for everything. And then that tone is quickly thrown away. I must admit though, this is a very, very great tactic to get people to at least accept and want to see the movie before it turns out to be really cringy. And I'm also convinced that they probably put a little bit more money into this movie than we thought. They told me Not just that, but the special effects in this whole intro shot right here, amazing, beautiful. It's one of the intros I will remember. Some of the most memorable intros for me is the Bohemian Rhapsody intro with Freddie Mercury, played by Rami Malek. That sent chills down my spine. And uh, yeah, that's the only way I can think off the top of my head right now. Wow. But this one too. The main character is not a low budget actor per se. So it was kind of surprising seeing him in this, even though I don't know his name. And I know I could quickly look it up just right now. I just don't feel like it. Sue me. But here's the other woman who I also don't really care about, but she's in every freaking horror movie where she's a weird ass individual. She has the hots for this guy. So much so that I can imagine what the neighbors must be thinking. I hope you rot in hell, you filthy vermin. Okay, I'm gonna set it loose in the park, okay? This woman is definitely afraid of spiders, but I'm like, you have a big ass lion who is basically instinctively engineered to catch spiders like this one. This is Butterworth. But are worthless when it comes to catching critters. Maybe I wouldn't be so worthless at catching critters if you didn't have this goddamn noose around my neck 24-7, Karen. Cat also looks very upset. Like, it does not want to be on a leash right now. Seriously, look at it. Cat's, <laughs> Cat's just sitting there like, I'm gonna fuck these people up. Government for anything, but you can always count on me. My favorite <laughs> client. Is that bun that he just, he's collecting and he's not eating? The oh my God, is that really? With the older lady trying to save his life from the spider, he gets bitten and ends up in the hospital where we see one of the most uncomfortable exchanges I have ever seen between a man and a woman. A nurse journal or nurse illustrated or whatever it is, then I would probably see a picture of you. I mean, you are like the perfect nurse. <laughs> wow. Cringe. You know, I've only got one meal left. What do you say? You, me, breakfast? Huh? No. Damn! Ouch. A dead body comes in, the doctor who was checking with things gets bitten by a big ass spider. He rings a fire alarm to alert people as to what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? Uh, this is a false alarm, it is a false one folks. The hospital manager or whoever this guy is that is holding on to the last bits of his hair at the front of his head is so adorable. His character is kind of annoying, but kind of cute at the same time. Our main character is like, look guys, if you got a problem, I can, I can help you with that. I'm a spider expert. I become a spider to catch a spider. Okay. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Why? <laughs> oh, I love the hospital manager, dude. <laughs> he's just, he's, his reactions are so genuine looking. Holy shit. The main character, after seeing the doctor's bite mark and how infected it already looks, he realizes he's not working with an ordinary spider. This thing is next level dangerous. By the way, Jose's character is like the best character out of this entire movie. You have handcuffs too? Good, okay. That's amazing. Sure. So you get in the mind of the spider, really? I Hospital manager tells Jose to go with the guy to check out what's going on down there. Uh. Ah! Oh! <laughs> yes, I know, but I thought it was, you know, a spider that you were scared too. Shut up. And the interaction that the main character and Jose have are just so real. The dialogue feels like these guys were actually having a real conversation without a script. Jose, get up there. I'm not gonna get up there. Come on, man, you're a little guy. Get in the vent. I'm not going in there. I'm kidding. Get my bag for us. 
It's not funny, man. They quickly discover that the spider is not only dangerous, but it feeds on humans by living inside of them and then eating its way out. Of course, the military is responsible for this abomination, and we learn that the spider is actually an aberration of arachnid DNA mixed in with an alien life form's DNA, which is the reason why the spider is eventually going to get as big as freaking King Kong. They arrive at the hospital and are like, we gotta fix this problem because, you know, somehow things always manage to escape. Already the spider starts feeding on patients and the more it feeds is the bigger it grows. Jose and our main character become a sort of Batman and Robin. Jose suddenly forgets his job as a security guard and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna go around the world with you fighting the spider. Main character guy, whose name I never know, hunts down the spider and finds it. It's a lot bigger than he even thought it was. A hot military chick comes in to save the day right at that point and then we get some cringy dialogue between him and the girl. I mean, like, seriously, people don't act like this. You've got no idea what you're dealing with. Ah, uh, excuse me. <laughs> sorry, sorry. A move out. That was sarcastic. Move out. Are you feeling something? Cause Head out. At this point for the rest of the movie, it just feels like he's just playing pretend and the military girl's playing pretend and they're not really people within their occupations. I get it. The whole thing is meant to not be taken seriously, but it's still freaking cringe. The spider grows in stages because in these movies, you always have to indicate to the audience that this dangerous thing is about to get more dangerous once it gets to stage five, but we have to prevent it from getting there. And they do the stupid countdown thing of it going from phase three to phase four to indicate to the audience that shit's about to get real if it reaches the final phase, which it's going to reach before they're able to stop it. But they end up stopping it right as it's at that phase. It goes to the park and kills a whole bunch of people. And of course the children have some mighty plot armor. Fuck you! And then the girl with the ass just makes me mad. A bunch of girls are playing volleyball in their bikinis and you turn around and see a big ass spider. And what is your reaction? Scream like you just got Botox. Please, for the love of God, if you're gonna have these babes in these movies, give them LSD or something to make them trip and scare the shit out of them so you actually get a legit reaction. Oh my God, Ronnie. <coughs> Our main character and his new Robin to Batman friend decide to go on an adventure to try and stop the spider before the military guys can do it. As Jose says, it will help our main character's career. Look guys, it's the next Burt Gummer. That's a Tremors reference for those of you who don't know. And for those of you who don't know what Tremors is, you should go ahead and watch the first movie. If you like monster movies and you've not seen that, you are missing out. Suddenly the military chick that was writing off the guy before has the hots for him because when they write these movies, people who have no game and no class and no true personality whatsoever just magically have girls fall in love with them for no freaking reason. Even though in some cases I'm that girl, but still. Main character and Jose are able to lead the spider to the military barrier that they set up. All of a sudden, the spider knows how to jump and free willies itself to the other side of the barrier. Also, why are their guns not hitting the spider at all? You can see the green screen on the gun when, you know, whatever. Even though the military is supposedly equipped with a whole bunch of weapons and resources to handle this, all the soldiers that they deploy somehow are no match for the spider, but the pest control main character is using exactly almost the same weapons. It's a sad day when the spider kidnaps the girl and she is declared dead, even though we know she's not. Many fish in the sea, don't worry about it. By the way, the main character's name is Alex. There you go. Thanks, Jose, for constantly saying his name. Otherwise, I would not have known or cared. Alex doesn't miss a beat and even though he missed is his little soldier friend. He's like, you know what? We got to kill the spider or the military is going to blow everything to kingdom come. Told you with these movies, they always end up blowing them up. But you know what? They have a freaking bazooka. Did the military not think of that themselves? Alex, you have 10 minutes to get to the 60th floor. After that, I have no choice. Of course, we meet the scientist briefly who's responsible for making this monstrosity who looks kind of like Doc from Back to the Future. It's always a thing with these B-movies. Every single time it's this mad scientist or the scientist guy who's upset. And then the military is like, well, you started it. We're going to finish it. It's always the same freaking story. Of course, it doesn't take any time for the military general to find out that the girl, Carly, whatever her name is, is still alive. Of course, he tells Alex and he's like, you gotta save her, Alex, because we're the military and have a whole bunch of men and resources, but you know spiders. Even though the spider is not technically a real spider, it's mixed with a fucking alien. Of course, Alex is like, yes, sir. Of course, I'm gonna risk everything that I have to save this one girl that might die before I get to her and might cheat on me with somebody else and I don't really know her at all. 
all. He and Jose try to get there in record speed because of course the spider is entering phase five. What is phase five? They never say it until near the end of the movie. Oh, by the way, that's when she reproduces. Would have been nice to know ahead of time, but you know, whatever. That wasn't important until the plot decided it was. The spider causes a whole bunch of damage and it causes Alex and Jose to run off the road. That's when we get the segment of what we saw in the intro, but it goes nothing like what we saw in the intro, which I thought was way more badass. I was expecting him to snap out of it or someone to, hey, 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 Alex, look. But no, he just turns into a freaking superhero and he's like, da, da, da. now I'm going to save the girl. and Jose mean business. But of course, while they're on the way to the top of the skyscraper, they must do the Ninja Turtles elevator scene. God, can the cringe get any more deep? Also, the spider design doesn't look that bad, but you can see pieces of the skyscraper glitching as it's going on its way down. And I don't mean to notice these things, but it is so heavily obvious to me. Pretty sure there was a whole bunch of stuff I missed then. They reach the top floor and the girl is so happy to see Alex. Conveniently, she's not killed immediately, just like all the other humans that the spider came into contact with. It just so happens that by chance, she and a bunch of people were gonna be food for the babies. Even though the spider had reached phase five from before. Oh my god, she's dead. No, she's not. If that had been your precious Carly on the floor, you would have beat those spiders to hell. The woman was still screaming. But what are you doing? What? These people are so freaking evil. Girl's not bitten yet. Hasn't gotten taken off yet. You have a gun. You're equipped to handle the situation. Let's just let her get dragged away. This is the woman I want anyway. To be fair, maybe it's because the spiders are venomous and they already bit her, but still. Then they start shooting all the baby spiders that start hatching. You know what my thing is? In these movies with these bug movies, nobody ever, not once thought to like carry a can Minister of Raid, like, you know, just pool in their faces or a flamethrower or something. Nobody? No? Okay. <laughs> I like how near the end of the movie, the military are the ones that get the spider off the skyscraper and have it fall down to its death. And they're like, ah, so how much you gonna charge for killing the big spider? Uh, I don't know, but I hope it covers the cost of a new truck. No, you didn't, bitch. You saved the girl. You didn't kill the spider. From what I saw, it was the military Air Force pilots. Way to take away their credit for sacrificing their lives for the country. But of course, because this is a B-movie, we cannot kill a monster by crushing it with all of its weight. That simply does not happen. The only way to kill monsters in B-movies is if you blow them up. So we quickly realize that the spider isn't dead. And of course, the exterminator doesn't just take the credit for not having killed it before when everyone thought it was dead. But now he gets to blow it up in all of his grand glory. Double time. He is the hero. Again, he thought of this plan a long time ago. Why did he not tell the military? And of course he gets the girl. But what they don't tell you is that even though he gets the girl, he might not stay with that girl for a long period of time because she's still in the military and she's gonna have to be stationed far away from him for many, many years. And both of them are not gonna be able to stay faithful to each other if that's the case. So yeah, all that for nothing. Come on, you guys. <laughs> okay. Hey, come on, guys, get a room, okay? Big ass spider, followed by what would be later called big ass cockroach. Not as cringy as some of the other low budget movies I've seen. It was actually kind of entertaining, and I didn't feel like I wanted to choke myself three times over from watching it. You guys should definitely get it. It's worth watching because apparently it's a classic bad movie. Very generic. And yeah, the better actors in this movie didn't really make it that better. But the cinematography and them using an actual camera instead of a potato actually made a little bit of a difference. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori. You ask, we answer.